name? My name is Aliza Ross, and I am I'm really thrilled to welcome you to another fun episode of How Do You Fix Your Coffee? So these um, episodes kind of came about from an idea of wanting to connect about kind of what's normal, what's mundane, that's been going on um, while we are away from each other. And it started out as wanting to know how do people fix their coffee when they're at home? And it's kind of moved into a platform for various topics. And today we're gonna to be talking about the arts and how various forms of art nourish our soul these days. I'm wearing my reading rainbow shirt. So I have there, you know, instances of Wizard of Oz, of um, Lion Witch in the Wardrobe, Alice in Wonderland in there. So I stole it from my brother's closet, but I'm sure he won't mind. I um, At the end of our session today, I hope you'll indulge me by doing something that we have been doing for the last few episodes, which is we take a screenshot of all of us holding our morning beverage of choice, uh, and then we share it on social media and in other platforms. So I'm going to turn it over. Before I turn it over, I'm going to just a couple of quick logistics here. I'm pretty much here to help facilitate just to make sure that you know, everybody gets to speak. Um, okay. So if you would like to raise your hand, um, feel free to click the reaction uh, that indicates a hand clap, or just raise your hand and we'll, we'll get you. Feel free to also put your name and class here in the group chat, which is on the side of your screen. That way everyone knows who's here and who's joined us. If you don't have a class here, still put your name. That would be great to see you too. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to two of my very fun colleagues. Uh, we have another one who's going to be joining us about 9.15. Um, but first, I would like to introduce to you Kate Bossert, uh, who works in the English department, and Jen Wester, who works in the art department. And uh, we'll just leave it to, to them to talk about how they are nourishing themselves right now, especially being distanced distanced from students and how they're finding uh, good work in their own art. Uh, so Kate, could we start with you? Sure. Um, so like Aliza said, I'm Kate Bossert. I'm an associate professor of English at Notre Dame. I also direct the drama program. So I typically engage with students in, um, in terms of literature and drama and also performance. Um, so I, I guess in terms of how like I'm engaging with art, I mean, I, I thankfully have the opportunity to connect to all my students virtually. And so we're still reading and talking about theater and that's been a lifeline. Um, but, you know, just some real talk. I'm also home with, with a five-year-old and a five-month-old. Um, and so in terms of like engaging with art outside of my homework, time is, um, time is precious and, and that's been challenging. Um, so I've actually been doing a lot of art with my kindergartner, and that's been really, really fun. Um, and it's also really centered me and given me some time to focus. Um, so uh, I know there's lots of opportunities to engage with art um, virtually in terms of like theaters that are streaming shows. And um, every morning I, I get up and I listen to Patrick Stewart uh, read me one of Shakespeare's sonnets, and that's been fabulous too. Wow. Um, so uh, I think it's been, been bringing me a degree of focus um, amid a, a very chaotic moment in my house and also in, in just in our culture right now. Jen, what about you? <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, this all sounds very familiar. I'm a year old so um, my, my entire reality has shifted with not having childcare um, and having to, my husband and I are both working from home full time and trying to balance a, a needy two-year-old with our need to get work done and be present for our colleagues and for my students. Um, but I would agree that, oh, by the way, just to introduce myself, I'm Jen Wester. I teach art history and I'm also the gallery director at Notre Dame. Um, I've been there for four years now. And uh, yeah, I'm making a lot of art with my son. You can actually see some over my shoulder hanging, chip clipped to our book bookcase there, some of his paintings. Um, so we've been, you know, every day we do something, we play with different materials and it's fun because he's at the age where not making anything that's like, you know, all that um, complicated. It's really just about play. And um, it's fun for me to kind of get my hands dirty too and finger paint and just kind of 
let my mind, you know, ease from all of the stress and tension of trying to keep up with work and keep up with a pandemic and just kind of play. So that's been really nice. And then with my students, you know, with the online learning, um, teaching our history, of course, all I do is look at art um, in all of my classes and share it with my students. And actually, I really, as much as I prefer to be in the classroom with my students, the online format um, forcing everyone to participate, like, you know, in these discussion boards where a lot of students would sometimes just sit in the classroom and take things in, which is totally valid too. But now everyone has to contribute and um, it's really opened things up. People are talking more and, you know, I'm giving a lot more assignments to find an artwork that does this and seeing what they come up with. And that's a really exciting way for me to discover things that my students connect with. And so it's not necessarily the stuff that I would have sought out. Um, so that's been really uh, wonderful. And as Kate said, there's, you know, museums are doing amazing programming, virtual programming, and I wish I had a little more time to enjoy some of it, but I do enjoy kind of all of the social media art stuff that's been happening with people recreating paintings at home. And I do a little of that with my son sometimes. And um, yeah, just trying to have fun with it. You know, it's just a constant um, presence in my life is looking, I'm not much of an art maker, except for with my son, but always um, looking at art, surrounding myself with it and um, talking about it, sharing that with my students. So that's been continuing. And then for the gallery, um, since we had to close, I've been running a sort of virtual exhibition of our gallery show right now via Instagram and Facebook. I post a new artwork every day and say a little bit about it. And that's been some really good community feedback. People have really connected with that. So that's been fun to engage in that way too. Nice. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, if you just joined us, uh, we're here with Kate Bossert and Jen Wester, who um, both uh, work at Notre Dame and, and teach uh, and work with different forms of art. And just our topic for today is, you know, how is art nourishing our souls these days in whatever form of art you find joy in? And I would like to start with the alums who are on the call. I, I see, I see everybody's photo. And uh, maybe, maybe you all could share a little bit about kind of what, how you're finding your preferred form of art that's bringing you joy. And maybe Julie, we can start with you. <laughs> Uh, two things. One is uh, we had a fire at school when I was there and I ran back into the burning building. And by the way, I'm completely terrified of fire, but I ran back into the build burning building to get my Janssen history of art. Just so you know, I still have the book. Oh, I'd love to hear that. <laughs> um, I'm, not, I'm not particularly uh, artistic or crafty or whatever, um, but I'm a big fan of the book, The Artist's, the Artist's Way by uh, Julia Cameron. And I've started it a bunch of times. Each time I was making a change in my life, I started it. I never finished it until this last time when I retired, I hope, for the last time. And um, one of the things that it uh, recommends is, um, one is that you, you do a journal every day, that you, you write a couple of pages. And it's just for you. Nobody else reads, reads it. It's, it can be whatever it is. Uh, and mine's pretty much, you know, what I did yesterday, what I'm going to do today. But every now and then something bubbles up from your soul that is meaningful that you write down. Um, and the other thing in there that they uh, suggest is that you do something just for yourself that is artistic once a week. Whether it's go to the theater, go to a gallery, you know, do something, go to a movie, you know, do something like that once a week. And uh, that's kind of hard to do right now. But We've been watching uh, we've been watching Turner Classic movies, which is as close as I can get for now. Um, but anyway, that's uh, that's 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 my gig for the moment. Uh, I guess one other thing, I um, I made a speech about immigration recently at the uh, Alliance for the Arts uh, to the Progressive Women here in Fort Myers. And while I was there, they they were having an Iki Matsusoto um, uh, art exhibit, and I I brought Paul back to see it and lo and behold we found a a print of um what looks like a bunch of fiddler crabs being in in, in an orchestra fashion being you know being uh direct being conducted by the head fiddler crab and sure enough the title was arthur fiddler and the beach pops and Paul used to work for Arthur Fiedler. So, and we have a, a fiddler crab migration at Shelter Island. So we just had to have it. So we bought it. We have it hanging on the wall. And um, when I went back to pick it up at the end of the exhibit, I met the artist's daughter who told me that 
um, he had always found a way to incorporate her into his art and her brother got kind of peed off, peed, <laughs> pissed off about that and said, you know, what about him? So in this one, there's one left-handed fiddler crab. And so it's kind of a puzzle, <laughs> find the left-handed fiddler crab because that's in honor of her brother. So that's my, that's my art stuff for, for today. Nice. It sounds like art's a really central piece of your life. That's fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. In terms of finding um, ways to engage with our favorite live performance art, um, you know, it's it's been really interesting because so many theaters have made um, performance available. So I was watching um, the American Shakespeare Center in Stanton, Virginia. They actually made their season available. So you can, um, for a pay what you will fee, log into what they're calling Blackfriars TV. Blackfriars Theater is the name of their theater and um, access their six play season. Um, so these are performances that were recorded live. And so it's available 24 seven. And so that's an incredible opportunity. I think the National Theater in London right now is gearing up to show their 2011 production of Frankenstein, which I'm really excited about. Um, uh, it's, it's interesting to think about though, like in terms of creating incredible access to, to theater and these recordings, but like what's different about it? Because it is different, right? Um, because theater and, and live performance, these are things that, that um, kind of hinge on the connection we make in the moment. Um, so some theaters are actually doing live performance through Zoom. So it's happening and they're not recording it. So it's like you can catch it in the moment or it's gone, you know, and that kind of, kind of tries to simulate some of what happens when you see a live performance. But I think like you know, being in the room um, and that connection that you make when you're in the room with the actor or you're in the room with the musician when it's happening is something we, we really can't create right now as we're all sheltering in place you know and so there is a real loss there and so i feel like it's important to kind of think about that too it makes you really appreciate um what it is to kind of have that cathartic moment in the theater um so uh my students and i've been thinking about that a little bit um since we've been accessing lots of performances but not able to go as a group to see a show as we had planned to do this semester yeah yeah I think I think that's an important point because you know we're trying desperately we're all creatures of habit we're trying desperately to get back to normal but normal wasn't always perfect and and we need to acknowledge the parts that aren't normal and maybe won't be again and appreciate the ones that are not normal now and you know like you just said that 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 are very special in person and and will be again yeah I would love to hear from uh, from Donna and and Chrissy, and then we're going to turn it over to to Kathy Gasher for a second. But Donna, how are how are you finding joy in art these days? Well, uh, mostly via technology, like everyone else. Um, I have to say, I'm super impressed with what is available on technology, and really feel very blessed about that. Um, you know, so many, as, as was already noted, so many performances on television that never would have been accessible by the, the greater population unless it were for these circumstances. So in a way, it's, it's much more egalitarian, art is much more egalitarian in a lot of ways. Um, I think our museums have been uh, doing a great job of providing free admission, but now literally you can tour you know the great museums of the world for free and you don't have to travel and how many people really um, can ever afford to do that so so i'm finding some you know lemonade among the lemons here um i'm watching a lot of uh public tv also which uh was always great but i'm finding more and more really interesting um tours of museums for instance or um, I just watched a series of, of tours of the uh, vineyards of Italy and, uh, and learned so much about all the different regions of Italy, many of which I visited, but, but this was a whole new look, a whole new perspective on it, and that's been a lot of fun. Um, you know, there are so many educational things available. I have not been creating any art myself other than cooking every night. <laughs> so I guess because we have not even done one carry out, you know, since this all began in March, I've been fixing dinners every night. And that's, 
that's a little bit of creativity, I guess, you know, just having to come up with new ideas and recipes and trying out things I wouldn't have been trying otherwise. So I guess that's good. That's totally um, a form of art. I think it is. I think it probably is. Yeah. Yeah. So I've been enjoying that. Um, I've been feeling a little bit guilty about not pursuing, you know, more journaling, I think, as Julie mentioned, or, or, um, or even uh, drawing or painting, I used to, I used to do watercolors, and I haven't pulled out all that gear, you know, and, and done any of that yet. And it's what I'm finding is, I can't blame it on a lack of time available, you know, like I used to, I used to be able to say, Oh, I don't have time for that. Well, now I found out that's not really the reason I haven't been doing it. So I don't know, I guess I have to wait for a muse or something like that. But, um, but anyway, I, you know, I, I feel like, um, in a way, I'm participating more in a lot of uh, artistic um, performances and experiences than I would have otherwise while I was running around, you know, from meeting to meeting or activity to activity. So I don't know, it's an interesting time we're in. I really don't think it's going to end anytime as soon as people hope. And so perhaps we need to start appreciating, you know, new ways of experiencing art and beauty and joy. Um, and, um, you know, maybe not taking so much for granted as we did. That's where I am at this moment. Very good point. Yeah, that's excellent. Chrissy, what about for you? How's, how's it going? So I was going to say it's for me, the cooking and, and, um, my mother is an extraordinary cook, not a great baker, an extraordinary <laughs> She can take like five ingredients and make something that's like the most delicious thing you've ever eaten. And she has tons of cookbooks. She even made us one year for me and my brother for Christmas. She made us like living cookbooks of her like simple recipes. So I was like, I should take out the living cookbook and make the things in the cookbook. But then I, like her, have, I can't even tell you, like 20 cookbooks and they line the shelf and I never open them and I've been opening them and I find that like that all this beauty in the pictures and the food and the food that I'm finding that I like is the simplest to make it's like a five ingredient you know and then I take kind of like the twist my mom puts on them but I really have and it's not like I'm eating unhealthy um and I really have found like a different beauty in food and I found a lot of recipes um, that, you know, either I forgot about or just, you know, didn't make, but I understand now when, when people, um, when you make that kind of, kind of food, this five ingredient food, you really don't need to eat that much. It's like, that's just enough. And I, I kind of understand that now because I'm so used to like take out or to go or, you know, whatever. But I think going forward, I have to definitely meal prep a little more and cook. I feel like it's good for the soul. So that's my work. Agree. That's a good, actually, a really good tie-in. I would like to introduce to you all Kathy Goucher. Uh, Kathy, do you want to introduce yourself and a little bit about how your um, your field is, is nourishing you? Sorry, I thought I had my finger on the proper button. Hello, <laughs> um, I'm Kathy Goucher, and um, I uh, am um, the program director for the art therapy programs at Notre Dame and an alum. So I'm happy to be here for many reasons, and I love art. So this is like a really fun, and I have my coffee. Um, so thank you, this is so great. Um, I, I mean, what crazy times we're in. Um, but I pretty quickly um, doubled down on my um, passion and understanding of art to um, sustain myself and um, to help me to stay grounded and connected and in touch with what I'm feeling and experiencing on a daily basis and um, and really took it as an opportunity and a little gift in an odd way to make art every day which is so far from where I had been um, I had not other than the baking and the cooking and the gardening I'm an avid gardener I had been very far from my own personal engagement with art materials traditional and non-traditional for quite a bit 
Um, as you might imagine, with starting a new program, and I also run a nonprofit for adults with disabilities mm -hmm. to make art. So I was always engaged in art making, but at a distance. And so um, it has felt a little bit of, of like a gift in the sense that now I'm making art every day. So, um, but my art making is very connected to community and building community and staying in touch with not just my own experience, but the collective, the shared experience of it all. And art has the capacity in any modality, I think, to do that, as Kate was saying, with the theater and that experiencing it in real life and catching those um, those things that happen or don't happen or happen in an odd way and or evoke a feeling. And so um, I pretty quickly came to the realization that I wanted to not only do art myself every day, but I wanted to try to connect with other people um, all over the place in making art together. Um, and so I have a daily art challenge. Um, it started on my deck. Um, so sometimes I'll call it the art on the deck challenge, but it's a virtual challenge and I invite you all to join me. Um, I post daily around 10-ish, sometimes 11, sometimes, you know, a little earlier. Um, but I'm, I'm really, I try to tap into kind of what I'm experiencing or what I'm hearing in the news or what the feeling is and sort of put that into an opportunity for people to think about a theme. And I also offer um, some suggestions as to either traditional art materials you might use or household materials you might use and, and maybe not even consider art materials before but but they can be art materials so trying to make it accessible for all ages and for people um, who might not have access to traditional materials and then around three o'clock again a little bit wiggly squishy on the time but around three o'clock we have a roll call and so people can sort of elect to post what they've made or what their child's made Jen, or, you know, it's really fun. Um, and it's fun to just feel like, oh, we're apart, but yet we're all making together and we're all having some, some themes really resonate and really capture a lot of people or um, are uncomfortable to approach. And it's sort of permission to approach that theme and that idea. Um, so I'm posting them on my page, my own personal page, but I'm making them public. Um, so it's just Kathy Galger, or um, I'm also posting them on the um, the art therapy at Notre Dame of Maryland University Facebook page. So you can certainly like that page. Sorry, shameless plug. Um, and you can also engage with us and make with us every day. I'm not doing it on the weekends. I decided I would give myself permission to garden on the weekends and to take walks. So, well, I'm taking daily walks, but um, I happen to live close enough to Sherwood Gardens. So I've been going up there as often as possible and taking photographs. Um, and that's another um, art form that I'm really enjoying right now, even though it's on my phone. Yeah. So, yeah, so that's me. Excellent. Thank you for I'm, the forum. Uh, it's really fun. This is excellent. I'm actually gonna be posting, um, I'll, I'll include a link right now in our chat. Um, to our virtual programs and resources webpage, which is kind of a hub for a, a bunch of different resources for everyone. Uh, and we will share um, Kathy's link to, uh, to the Notre Dame Facebook page so you can all follow it. Um, very unfortunately, we only have about a minute or two left uh, in today's chat. Clearly, we have not even touched the tip of the iceberg when it comes to the, the good things about art these days. Um, I wanted to, to ask Kate and Jen if they wouldn't mind ending with just a, a quick note of maybe a tip uh, for us about how to engage in perhaps performance and studio art, uh, uh, you know, in the next week or so. Would either of you like to feel that very, you know, very spontaneous question? Um, well, you know, I can tell you what I gave myself over to yesterday. I had a very busy afternoon of grading and meetings and my son um, has an amazing art teacher in kindergarten who does weekly zoom um, art making with them at one o'clock on Tuesdays and so yesterday was puppet making and he got so into it that he turns to me and he says mommy I want to do a play 
and I'm looking at like my stack of everything and but I have but I'm a drama teacher and my son just asked to write a play <laughs> so, so I was like okay well clear the calendar we're writing a play mm -hmm. and so we we just did a play about a hummingbird and I used my phone and we recorded him doing it and then I used iMovie and we edited it and oh. I've never used iMovie in my life and I figured it out and <laughs> so two hours later like we had a play and then we had something that we were watching and laughing about and sent to the grandparents and it was the best afternoon because I cleared my head. I felt more focused than I felt all week. Um, so I feel like I guess my tip is like when the muse strikes, I think Donna, you said like you're waiting for your muse. When the muse strikes, whether it's like yourself or like someone in your household, <laughs> participate in it. Um, and, and don't try to force it, but if the opportunity is there, take that opportunity because, you know, yeah. we, we're, we're in our houses right now. Why, why, why not, right? Right. right. Yeah. I agree with that. It's sort of, you know, with a two-year-old, he'll just suddenly be like, Mommy, I want to paint. And I'm like, do I really want to get out paintbrushes and make the mess and then have to clean it up? And it's like, well, you know what? Why not? And so we just do it and we just kind of let it flow. And if it lasts five seconds or it lasts half an hour, you know, we call it a win. And yes, we have been following Kathy's prompts as much as possible, which has been helpful to me as somebody who has a hard time coming up with, okay, we want to do something and not just the usual, you know, same paint on the same paper. Um, and it's been really helpful to just get our creativity flowing to just have that different prompt to follow. Um, but I would say in terms of like a tip for the more like, Art historical art viewing, um, check out a different museum every day. I mean, every museum is putting out different public programming, trying to really connect. And we're very fortunate in Baltimore to have these wonderful museums. Um, and they're doing, the BMA has some amazing shows that unfortunately had like just opened before this happened. It was an all women and female identifying, uh, it's the year of the woman, right? And so it was all this great, powerful, um, some local female artists as well as national, and they're still do, working really hard to make that accessible. They're providing artist talks, they're giving like virtual tours of the shows. So that's really fun. And then I think Marika mentioned in the chat as well, the, um, the Getty put out a call for people to read create um, famous artworks with household objects. And those are really fun to look at, but also like do them yourself, right? Why not? Um, I had, um, I have a like series I've done with my son where it's just like, I take photos of him and they happen to remind me of famous paintings and I'll just kind of make the side by side. But you can also just have some fun doing that if you have a favorite artwork or something that's even in your house that you can um, recreate. I'm sorry if you hear my two-year-old. It's okay, this is part <laughs> of life. Um, he's like, your time's up, mom. Um, so those are, yeah, those are my tips is just, um, as everybody else has been saying, like, give yourself permission to play to, you know, have this be a very low stakes just for your own enjoyment and nourishment and whatever form it takes. And you can find these things if you just look for them. And maybe it's you set a time every day, like, hey, while I'm having my coffee every morning at nine, I'm just gonna pop onto, you know, MoMA or the Met or the BMA and see what I can find today to, and it might inspire you to want to make something or it might inspire you to want to, I don't know, um, explore something more and learn about it. So thank you. So that's, that's awesome. Thanks very much. A uh, huge thanks to, to Kate, Jen and Kathy for, for joining us today. In how do you fix your coffee fashion? If you all wouldn't mind raising your, your mug, glass, glass, whatever you have, and if you hold it up and look right at your camera, then everyone will be looking at the camera. Okay, ready? <laughs> One, two, three, cheese. Cheese. Thanks, everyone. <laughs> Our next How Do You Fix Your Coffee uh, is going to be held next Thursday, May 7 at 9 a.m. Topic to come. And hopefully we can have more uh, great discussions about art. So in the meantime, everyone have a terrific day and uh, we'll see you soon. Thanks, Lisa. Thank you. Bye. Thanks, guys. Bye. Thank you. Bye. It was good to see everyone. <laughs>